Wait, this song has nothing to do with the movie or the character. Hmm. Oh well. What is up, everybody? Random, random man here. I hope everyone out there is continuing to stay safe and be well during this unpredictable time as I am here bringing you my review for Black Widow. Based on the Marvel Comics character of the same name and taking place in between the events of Captain America Civil War and Avengers Infinity War, the plot of this superhero film basically follows our title heroine slash Natasha Romanoff, played by Scarlett Johansson, who is on the run and forced to confront her past. Going into this movie, I had moderate expectations. Now, it being the 24th and latest film in the Marvel Cinematic Universe did have me looking forward to it. It was also one of the films that got hugely delayed by this current pandemic that we are living in, much like A Quiet Place Part 2 and F9. Now, those two films have been released and have been successful at the box office thus far, and now this is one that is also vying to rank in some big numbers. This is also the first film in the MCU that we have gotten in two years. And in between 2019 and now, we have received three MCU shows on Disney+. Plus: WandaVision, which I enjoyed a lot. Falcon and the Winter Soldier, which I enjoyed even more. And now Loki. And at the time I am filming this, we have just received the penultimate episode of the series or season or whatever it's going to be yesterday, and I am loving that show the most out of all three that we have gotten thus far. And now Black Widow is the first film in Phase 4 after those aforementioned shows began that phase. But with the idea of Black Widow getting her own solo film, I was never keen on that idea in the first place. Now, I do like her as a character. I've enjoyed Scarlett Johansson's portrayal of her since her introduction in 2010's Iron Man 2, but I never really felt like anything was warranted to give her a movie on her own when she was already working well as a member of the Avengers and popping up in other MCU movies with, again, Scarlett Johansson fitting everything well. Also, given the fate of the character in Avengers Endgame, I was wondering how a solo movie with her could work. But as I pointed out earlier, this takes place in between Civil War and Infinity War as a prequel of sorts. And for all that I have said, I was still looking forward to seeing this film. And I was lucky enough to be able to catch this thing at the first showing in theaters at 5 o'clock p.m. Thursday as I am filming this. By the way, something funny that I did not notice initially on my ticket is that it says child. So whoever rang me up thought that I did not look my age. I mean, I am 23, but I look 16. So huh, there you have it. Even with all this disgusting facial hair, I do not look my age. Starting out with the cast and their performances, we have Scarlett Johansson as Black Widow herself slash Natasha Romanoff. This is the eighth time she has portrayed this character and she slips back into this role with ease. I mean, I always liked her as this character, as I said before. And here, given the gravity of what her character had just gone through in the events of Civil War and being on the run, there's a lot for her to process here. And there's also her past that she is forced to confront that is also overlapping with what she has to do. And Johansson, being a great actress that she is, I think handles it all with grace. And then within the action, she is a bona fide badass here. Not much more to say than that. The supporting cast in this film, I think, is superb. Firstly, we have Florence Pugh as Yelena Belova, the sister figure to Natasha Romanoff, and I think that Pugh steals just about every scene that she is in here. I loved Pugh before this movie. She is one of my favorite up-and-coming actresses. And like with ScarJo as Romanoff, there's a lot to process here for Pew's Belova. And the chemistry that these two have together, I think, brings out the main heart of the movie, this sisterly superhero 
bond and love with each other. And with Pew Esbelova on her own, she really is my favorite performer in this film for all of the wisecracks that she has, um, the jokes, and even her holding her own within the action sequences. I think this will make Pew even more popular than she already is now. There's also David Harbour as the Red Guardian, the father figure to both of these women, and he's basically the Russian version of Captain America. Harbour I've loved before this film as well, and like with Pew, he has a lot of funny moments with him, and he's also somebody that is able to do a lot with the action scenes that he's in. Another ally to Romanov here is Rick Mason, as played by O.T. Fogmanley. I apologize if I butchered that. He shows up here and there to help out Romanov get what she needs, and for the role that he is given, I think the actor does what he does well with the role. Finally, there's Rachel Weiss as Melina, the mother figure to Natasha and Yelena, who is also a Black Widow that has been trained in the Red Room like them. She has the least to do between the core for family members, so to speak, of this movie, but I did appreciate what she did in this film, especially early on, and then when she re-enters the picture, and there is a great scene involving all four of the main family, and that is probably my favorite moment of the film, non-action-wise. The writing of this film doesn't just set it up as a prequel to other MCU movies that we have gotten, as it's also a bit of an origin story for our title heroine. The opening of the film is set in 1995 Ohio, where we do get an idea of the family unit that Natasha was in with before a lot of stuff changed in a matter of moments. Then we skip ahead over two decades later where Romanoff is on the run from the government and General Ross specifically played again by William Hurt and with what she has to do in also confronting her past with also the then present of this movie taking place it's interesting to see how it all connects together. It does feel like we are literally going backwards within the MCU, because we are, and in some ways it did feel like a movie that could have been made and released earlier on within the MCU's timeline, yet I think that how the movie begins and what it establishes for the character that we haven't seen before was something engaging. And part of that I think is due to the steady directorial hand of Kate Shortland. Another reason I was interested in this movie was to see how she would direct a big budget film like this one, because I've seen two of Shortland's previous films, Berlin Syndrome, which I liked a lot, and Laura, which I loved. And both of those films also focus on female protagonists who are determined to get what they want in the end, no matter the context of those movies. And I think that is some of the strength with this movie, in Shortland directing a script that is simple at its core and has nothing groundbreaking to it, but the way she directs her actors and the action at large, I think makes this movie consistently entertaining. And speaking of the action, the action is mostly comprised of a lot of hand-to-hand -hand combat sequences, some chases, and some stuff that we've grown to expect from the MCU. But with uh, Natasha Romanoff as a character being a trained former KGB agent and Black Widow trained extensively in the Red Room, you expect a lot of the action to have a lot of physicality to it. This also applies in the way this movie is shot and how it is on a technical scale overall. I think that it is mostly stably done both in the action and the non-action sequences, the way it is strung together and edited. It's paced to run at about 2 hours and 15 minutes, including the post credit sequence, which of course everyone who is an MCU fan is going to stay all the way towards the end for. And the music I have to give a shout out to as well. Lorne Balfe composed the score for this movie, and he's previously done uh, the scores for movies like Mission Impossible Fallout, which I loved and I thought amped up the tension, and that this movie being a spy movie of similar realms to Mission Impossible is uh, having the same kind of flair and feel to it that I think adds on to the viewing of this movie. Now there are some things that I do think hold this movie back from MCU greatness, so to speak, as 
overall, I don't think this is one of the best films within the franchise, at least initially upon me having just seen this movie earlier today. As the way the movie plays out within its third act, I think has the movie conclude chaotically without giving anything away. There's a lot of heavy use of CGI and a lot of stuff happening so fast, both narratively and within the action, that made me go, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. It made the first two thirds of this movie stick out in my mind as stronger than the last act that was supposed to end it all. It also has to do with the MCU villain problem returning and with a whimper too, because it was a running gag for a bit with this franchise that there was a villain problem movie to movie. And with this movie having two villains, it stuck out more too, because one of them was mostly non-existent for the duration of it. Ray Winstone plays Drekov, the head of the Red Room where all Black Widows are brainwashed and trained to become deadly assassins. And he's introduced within the opening segment of this movie and then he is absent for most of it until that aforementioned third act, and he really comes off as nothing and didn't make much of an impression. The same also applies with the other villain known as the Taskmaster, who takes opponents' fighting abilities and uses it against them when they are in battle, which seems cool at first, and then we get the reveal of the character in the third act too, and it is set up, but then it really doesn't have much payoff, much like with Winston as Drekov. So it made me feel like, yeah, these two were basically wastes of characters in this film and are basically at the sideline to what the main point of the movie in showing how Natasha is reuniting with her family and then also just trying to take down the Red Room as well. But it is that thematic element of family that gives this film a beating heart throughout it. And this is coinciding with a lot of us having uh, either just seen F9 or have been exposed to a lot of memes involving Dominic Toretto popping up in different franchises and IPs all over the place. I mean, <laughs> they're so, so ridiculous. But Black Widow giving that huge family bond or specifically the sisterly superhero bond between Natasha and Yelena does give this movie a lot of levity to it. As I mentioned earlier, I don't think this is one of my favorite movies within the MCU thus far. I think that it is mid-tier MCU fare for now and it more or less met my expectations for what I expected this movie to do, though I still enjoyed it overall and I think that I will enjoy it more the more removed I am from this movie having been just recently released and with Phase 4 being over and seeing how it fits in within the MCU chronologically. There's a lot here for fans of the MCU to like as I've also mentioned beforehand and ultimately this does get a recommendation from me. My final verdict for Black Widow is three and a half out of five stars. Thank you all, as always, for watching. Be sure to like this video, comment on what you thought of Black Widow, social media links, in the description, subscribe to my channel for more, and I'll catch you on the next movie review.